Good morning, Embassy Church. Welcome to Church on YouTube. As you can see, I'm not exactly at Embassy outside the old building where I'd like to be, waving my arms around and dancing around with a little mercy, my welcome mate. But hey, this we're in COVID land and we've got to do things COVID way. And so I'm outside my workplace at the moment, here behind. Got my little Ward Clark uniform on. And uh, yeah, just greeting you as we all gather for church on Sunday. So um, yeah, welcome. Welcome to those who aren't part of the Embassy crew. If you're not and you want to connect with us, just put a little something in the chat line. You know, there's new ways of connecting these days, all techno stuff. We can, I'm sure we can be in touch. And I hope that, you know, for everyone, I hope there's a bit of fellowship in this and a bit of encouragement even though it's not our usual deal, hey. <laughs> I'm gonna suggest that we dob in a mate, that'll be great, for the welcome slot. And I'm gonna dob my mate Gail in, because I reckon she could do welcome to country is the same as welcome to church too, hey, the price of one. So um, so yeah, Gailey, are you up for it? Mm -hmm. Given that um, Ree asked Mandy to ask me, I'm going to ask Mandy to ask Ree to ask you to do the welcome slot next week. Yes. Meanwhile, um, yeah, I'm supposed to do a prayer, aren't I, hey, as well. So, um, which feels weird because, yeah, I'm out here at work and you're, we've not even gathered yet, but I'm going to pray a prayer that I love to pray, which is just simply that God's name be glorified. So Heavenly Father, Lord God, I just, I thank you. I thank you that you are God. I thank you that your name is above all names, every name on earth, in heaven, in this age, in the age to come. We just lift up your name. We declare it beautiful. We declare that you are God. We declare that your ways are perfect. Your ways are just, that you care for us. We declare that you can hear from heaven and your arm is not shortened to save and father as we gather this sunday together whether we're gathering with people that we're familiar with or whether there's others that are just connected in through through technology father i pray be with us be present with us lord let your spirit touch each one of us let that that peace that comes into our heart and mind let that joy that comes into our spirit with your presence, let it be our, our touch from you today. And Father, I pray, I lift up those that would have burdens and I pray, let them, let them fall away in your presence, Lord God. And we just rejoice and declare the beautiful name of Jesus Christ over embassy and over everyone that gathers with us today. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm going back in there to crazy COVID land and yeah, but hey, let's go into church and worship God. Amen. Amen. Hello, Jordi. Hi, everyone. We just want to say hello from our front yard. Just enjoying some sun while we're in uh, lockdown. We hope that you guys are staying safe and um, yeah. Yes, and yeah, we want to show Jordan to you guys. I mean, it's been a while since she's been to church and she missed everyone's cuddles and looking forward to the day we all get to meet face to face. Then she can have everyone cuddling her. And yeah, so yeah, we miss you guys and yeah, we pray that um, yeah, we'll, this will be all over soon. But yeah, we love you guys. See you. See ya. Bye. <laughs> morning church i hope all is well during the pandemic this morning before we go into worship i would like to introduce our guest worship leader helen noel uh, she has been a huge inspiration in my spiritual walk with christ uh, her passion her heart of worship for god so wherever you are this morning let's come together and worship the father in spirit and in truth thank you helen noel for serving with our embassy family this morning god bless everyone take care hope to see everybody soon good morning embassy church well praise god for a glorious day today first of all i would just like to 
thank Pastor Ken and Pastor Amanda. Thank you so much for allowing me this platform to worship with you this morning. May God bless you both in the church. But before we start, I'd like to bring Psalms 34 verse 3 and it goes, Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. So let us prepare our hearts as we worship him this morning. The heavens are telling, telling the earth how great you
Marcia, how you going? Uh, please forgive the hat. Uh, in lockdown, can't get a can't get a haircut, so I've got a terrible case of the hat hair, or more probably more precisely the beanie hair. Um, so yeah, and as for the reflection in the glasses, can't do much about that. And it's probably for the best because I haven't slept much this week. But anyway, I'm continuing with the uh, where your treasure is series, and the topic that I'm speaking on is holiness. Great topic. <laughs> what a great topic. They always give me the good ones, eh? Um, but yeah, look, I, I just want to ask everyone, stick with me. I promise I'm not going to, you know, make everyone feel bad about themselves, including myself. And But at the same time, you know, I'm not necessarily going to just say what everyone or what we all want to just want to hear, you know? Okay, first of all, I think one of the difficulties for us uh, with this topic of talking about holy is that we speak English. Basically, uh, the English Bible has one word for it, holy, um, whereas in the context of the scriptures, you know, Old Testament written in Hebrew, New Testament written in Greek, um, and then there's a, there's a couple of different words, you know, for, for in each testament, and you know, we only have the one word. It's kind of the similar issue we have with the word love in the English Bible. Uh, whereas, you know, the original, the original languages have a few different meanings. And so, but anyway, let's, uh, first of all, let's start off by setting a standard. So for me, um, you know, when I, when I hear the word holy, the, the first thing that jumps to my mind is a, this picture in, in Revelation chapter four, uh, where the, the four creatures are around, you know, see, see the Lord on the throne and, and they're crying, holy, holy, holy. You know, so, so let's read that. Revelation 4, 8. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Well, day and night, they never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. This then starts a chain reaction. Uh, with the 24 elders around the throne, then they, they bow down and they start saying, you know, pray, worshiping and saying, worthy, uh, worthy is the Lord, um, you know, to receive glory and honor and power, right? And the, the verse says that that never stops. It just keeps going and going. So it's like, you know, you look up, you see God, oh, holy, holy, holy. <laughs> And then you look back and go, hey, holy, holy, holy. You know, you know what I mean? Like, and I don't mean to make light of it. I'm saying it's just such an intense, God's presence and absolute perfection is so overwhelming uh, that they just can't help it. 
You know, I mean, have you ever had a situation where you just can't help your reaction? You know, probably stubbing your toe on the on the side of a <laughs> on the side of a chair is probably one of them. I mean, for me, it's a silly example, but I've been listening to some um, some old school uh, BB and CC wine and songs. If you know their stuff, and some of those songs this week, and some of those songs, man, they just get me right. And so I can't help it when I hear it. It starts, and I'm like, you sort of close your eyes and you kind of do, ooh. You know, it's like you feel it, like it's impact. I just can't help it. It impacts me that much. It's a silly example, but the point is, you know, that it's such holiness in this picture in Revelation that it draws that reaction. And the word here, um, so we'll talk about a few different uh, words for holy in the Bible. The word in, in Revelation, so New Testament, so the, the Greek word is, is hagios. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And you know what? It doesn't really matter because none of us speak ancient Greek anyway. Um, and, and it's translated to mean like, speaks of being like ceremonies, ceremonially consecrated and it's like acceptable to God. Or maybe I can put it as like, you know, being worthy to be in his presence. Like God's presence is so intense. It's like there is a certain level of worthiness required to even be there. Now, if you check the footnote of that passage, in that passage, it points you to scripture in Isaiah in chapter six, where again, we see that this concept of uh, holy, 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 and it's Isaiah who is uh, seeing the Lord on the throne. So let's read that. Isaiah six, one to four. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. Awesome. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Now, Isaiah's reaction here is quite interesting because he realizes he's unworthy to be in God's presence. So if we go to verse 5, it says, Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. He was made holy by his sin being atoned for. So he was made holy. He was made worthy uh, to be in the presence of God in that sense. Uh, and it's the same for us. Um, our, our atonement is not a burning hot coal on your lips, which is probably good. Um, but our atonement is, obviously, through Jesus' death on the cross and, and resurrection. Now, the Hebrew word in this passage, um, you know, again, Old Testament written in Hebrew, is kadosh, meaning holy and sacred, consecrated or, or sort of dedicated, uh, set apart, dedicated to God, and, and, you know, by extension to that, free from impurity. So so there's that just that perfection, you know, and that sort of dedicated, set apart, you know, free from impurity is kadosh, right? Um, and when it refers to God, that word, when it refers to God as the Holy One, the word also speaks of him being totally unique, or the, the phrase is holy other, like completely different, like completely other to everything else, like completely unique. No, There's nothing, no one like God, right? Um, and so the point, the point I'm trying to make is the fact that he's so far above us, you know, for us to think that we can achieve that standard holy on our own is actually quite ridiculous. But we can be made holy. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Hebrews 10.10 says, We have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Now this word in this passage, um, in Greek, again, similar word, you know, from the same sort of extraction, is hagiazo, which means uh, to be sanctified, set apart, which can mean active dedication and service to God, or the act of regarding or honoring as holy or sanctified. So let's just abbreviate that to be set apart, to be set apart for a specific purpose. We can be made holy in that sense. 
well, we are made holy by Christ, by completely set apart. And, and that's the concept I sort of want to draw on. So look in the Old Testament, if you look at that, think of that phrase of being set apart or, or being like reserved, you know, for a specific purpose, you look at the, the nation of Israel, you know. Uh, so in Deuteronomy chapter 7, it describes it like this. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. Now the word there is the one we, we saw before, kadosh, um, consecrated, dedicated for, for a purpose, right? Uh, and so they were told not to blend, and if we look in the Old Testament, they were told not to blend in with other nations. They were told not to follow their, their other gods their other gods and stuff, but, but instead that they were meant to stand apart. They were meant to stand, uh, to be different, to stand apart as God's representatives to the nations. In the New Testament, Peter says something similar. So let's check out 1 Peter chapter 2, 9 to 10, saying to the church, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, again we see that, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Greek word there, acceptable, right? So we are also chosen as a, you know, as a, or as a word church actually means, ecclesia means called out. We are actually chosen, called out to be his and to represent him to this world. And then it's, but it specifies there, it's like, we have received mercy. It was something given to us. It's not something that we have earned. Um, so through that, we, we are made holy. Uh, let's let's check out Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 6 says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. The word for holy there, again, hagios, acceptable. Um, and it's interesting, it's, it talks about he chose us and being predestined and this is where I need to be. Uh, need to put my my flag in the ground as an ACC Pentecostal. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't believe that that you know refers to the theology that that some hold that you know around predestination and stuff that you know God sort of decides who gets saved and who doesn't. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I won't go into details, but you know, I, I don't think that's what it means. I think it's more about, you know, that he has a plan for us, that he always has always had a plan for us to be his, we are chosen, and only his. So he made a way for us to be his uh, through Christ, and that those who choose not to be his, you know, they won't know redemption. Those who choose to be his will know redemption. And if you read a bit further in that passage, it talks about, and the, the mark or the, or, or the proof of that, the receipt, is the Holy Spirit. So again, you know, talking about being made holy and, and blameless, like, so if I am blameless, I have no blame. Where is the blame? The blame was taken by Christ on the cross, you know, so to be made holy again, it, it's because he chose us, because he had a plan for us, because he extended that opportunity to us. It's not something that, that we have earned. It's something that's been given to us, you know, through Christ. Right, so let's go back to the Old Testament, doing a bit of back and forth here. Uh, and in something I want to sort of point out, in, in particular, uh, relating to the tabernacle, the things in the tabernacle. So the tabernacle was like while the, while the nation of Israel was in the wilderness, they basically had a massive tent that, that was like a mobile temple that they would set up every time they stopped to camp. And, you know, the priests would serve there and God's presence would be there in the Holy of Holies. 
you know, be, this is before settling in Jerusalem and building a temple. Um, and there's an interesting point here talking about, you know, you'd have to read the whole passage to see, but in terms of things being holy, uh, in particular, I want to point out a couple. One is the, you know, the high priest Aaron, or the first high priest, I guess, um, his, you know, part of his garments, the stuff that he specifically had to wear. Check this. Exodus 28, 36 to 38 says, Make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it as on a seal, holy to the Lord. Fasten a blue cord to it, attach it to the turban, of course. It is to be on the front of the turban. It will be on Aaron's forehead and he will bear the guilt involved in the sacred gifts the Israelites consecrate, whatever the gifts may be. It will be on Aaron's forehead continually so that they would be acceptable to the Lord. Right, so now in the Hebrew we have another another word, a similar word, Kodesh, set apart and dedicated to God. So set apart exclusively, and so we're talking about the, you know, the temple and stuff like that. Set apart exclusively for the presence of God. So even the priests, if, if you think about it, the Levites, they were, you know, separated, or not separated, but set apart from the other tribes as the ones to specifically serve in the temple, the ones to specifically be the ones to minister to the people. That was their role. They didn't inherit land. Um, you know, they were given portions of the other tribes' lands for, 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 the, for the Levite cities. They were, you know, they didn't work, the, but, you know, the, I guess the offerings and the tithes of, of the other tribes would, would help support them and their families. So they were set, up, set apart for that specific purpose. You know, and Aaron is the first high priest and, and he, he wears on his forehead on the turban, you know, holy to the Lord, completely set apart, completely consecrated, specifically for the purpose of being in the presence of God, you know. And then for us, Jesus is our high priest. Let, let me let me take a little little detour here, but you know, you you'll see why. I always thought it was quite harsh when Jesus says to Peter. So Jesus in uh, where is in Matthew chapter sixteen, he's predicting his own death, talking about his death. Peter pulls him aside, pulls him aside. You know, let me have a chat with you. Let me sort of correct you. He said that can never happen to you. <laughs> I was actually always thought it was a bit harsh. Jesus' reaction to him in verse 23 says, uh, Jesus turned to and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, and you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. It's a bit rough. Uh, Peter was a, you know, he was a temperamental dude, a bit rash, you know, didn't always think through his actions. But get behind me, Satan. Right. It, it seems a bit much but when you think about it like this being set apart being being anointed for a purpose jesus was anointed and set apart as the high priest to bear our guilt you know similar to what it said in, in the in the passage we just read about aaron will bear the guilt right to bear our guilt so that we can be acceptable to the lord you know so there's a parallel there between us and jesus and the people of israel and, and aaron their high priest and it's, it was a reason that he was here it was specifically the reason he was here, the, the the purpose that he was set apart for. And but Peter wasn't thinking about that. He was just thinking about he didn't want to lose his rabbi, his friend, his teacher. He didn't he didn't want to go through that. You know, and and we'll see by the way that he reacts when Jesus gets arrested, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um you know, Peter gets bagged out for, for denying Jesus, but it also mentions he was the only one that went to the to the trial to see what was up, you know, after everyone had run away. So he really didn't want that to happen. So he was just thinking about what he wanted. Jesus saying to him, Hey, this is the reason I'm here, this is the reason I'm set apart for this is this is what I've been anointed for. Um so back off, buddy. And so for us there's a similarity there in the sense of there is a reason why we're here. There is a purpose and a plan. There is something we've been anointed for, um, you know, whatever that may be, and that's different for everyone. But the concerns of this world can take us from that. You know, if you think about the parable of the, the seeds and all that, um, you know, we, we have a similarity here to Peter in the sense where 
our other concerns, you know, which are not holy in the sense that they are not set apart for God, they are not specifically for his purpose, they are not, uh, you know, made acceptable to him. Our concerns are now priorities get in the way of that. All right, stay with me. Um, now let's talk about the, the tools, the utensils, like everything in the ta in this tabernacle, like there was a table, there was, there was, there was a, you know, a lamp for the oil, there was all these different instruments, like you got to read it. it, it's, it's really quite amazing how specific and precise it all was, right? And it says in, you know, speaking about some of the tools, the tools themselves, because they were set apart specifically for that purpose within the temple, you know, normal things, uh, normal tools or normal utensils and stuff like that, a bowl, things like that, became holy. They were made holy, right? So let's check out Exodus 30, uh, 27 to 29, you know, as, as a bit of a summary. It says, the table and all its articles, the lampstand and its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offerings, and all the utensils and the basin with its stand, you shall consecrate them and they will be most holy. And whatever touches them will be holy. So again, we see uh, that word Kodesh, uh, set apart as dedicated to God, set apart exclusively for, for the presence of of God, so that even the most basic things, I know basic means something different to, to kids these days, but even the most basic things can be made holy, which is kind of an encouragement to us because sometimes we are the most basic, <laughs> you know, or we might feel like we're just ordinary or we don't have a special fancy, you know, presentation or, or skill or, or whatever. You know, whatever it might be, we've all got reasons that we put ourselves down or look down on ourselves um, or don't think that we're, what we have is enough, right? We, we all do that. We all do that. But we, as the basic tools, are also made holy because we are set aside, set apart specifically to be in the presence of God for God's purposes, to minister and so these, all these different concepts of holy, like it kind of makes sense about where we draw our holiness from, you know, and what holiness means to us. So if we go down to Second Timothy now, chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. So, you know, I'm specifically bouncing between the Old Testament and New Testament to, to show that these concepts carry through, right? Or that these concepts now relate to us as well. So 2 Timothy 2, 20 to 21 says, In a large house there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes and some are for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. So again, that, that word is the Hagiazo one, set apart. And, you know, to cleanse yourself, to set apart, to separate yourself from the common, we, we can be made uh, instruments holy to do the work. Now, I need to specify here, I'm not saying what we do and don't do doesn't matter. Like, you know, because I'm saying that our holiness is purely comes from God. I'm not saying that that's, you know, a license to then do whatever's. Because, you know, that, again, that wouldn't make sense. There is a sense that, you know, uh, God's moral law or God's law uh, is at work in us as well. And probably some of you have had that alarm bell ringing this whole time. So sorry it took me so long to get to it. But, um, you know, let's look at First Peter 1, 15 and 16. It says, But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. The word there is the acceptable one, hagios, right? To be to be made acceptable in, in God's eyes. You know, so I'm not saying that what we do and don't do doesn't matter. Like, it's obvious that that's part of it. You know, what I am saying is that our holiness, you know, it's made true by us being wholly set apart and given over to the Lord, wholly His, rather than just this concept of, achieving a moral standard, right? 
And I, I feel like this verse in 2 Timothy sort of speaks to that. 2 Timothy 1, 9 to 10 says, He has saved us and called us to a holy life. Uh, again, that, that's one. That's the one about being acceptable in, in God's eyes, you know, hagios. He's called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but he has now been revealed through the appearing of our Saviour, Christ Jesus. So the concept here is that, yes, it affects what we do and don't do. But this is a grace that's given to us. This, this is, you know, we're made holy in the sense of because we are his, our, you know, how we are in this world, our lifestyle, whatever it might be, is set apart for him and his purposes. So it is different. So it's supposed to stand out. So it's not supposed to blend in with the, with the world around us. It's not supposed to, um, you know, just accept whatever is, comes our way. There is a standard, but that standard is because of who we are, you know, and that affects what we do. Pastor Ray shared a, a quote with me when we were talking about the, this topic uh, for this week's message. Uh, let me read it. It's by Rich Vilodas. It's, uh, he said, in our minds, holiness is usually about what we abstain from, or what we don't do. But Jesus saw holiness as what you give yourself to, namely mercy, love, and hospitality. In the end, the holiest people are the ones who love well. Let me read this uh, verse in Colossians chapter 3, that again I think I feel speaks to that. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, again chosen, holy, again holy, that one is the acceptable hagios, and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So when talking about holiness, and in the context of this series, you know, like where your treasure is, I guess the question is do we treasure being his and only his? Do we treasure being set apart for his purposes and prioritizing that purpose in our lives? Do we value being different and standing out in today's society? Or I think it's natural for us as humans to want to blend in, to not want to stand out, to not face whatever, uh, you know, whatever speculation or whatever, Attention comes from being the one that's different. But do we value that difference and being that difference? Or are we trying to blend in? Because that's what sets us apart. That's what makes us holy. To be set apart, to be made acceptable uh, by His grace, you know, as we've specified. But it does. We're supposed to be different. We're supposed to stand out. We're supposed to not... Uh, be mistaken for someone who's not a Christian. That's probably the, the you know the plainest way I can put it. And that and that standing out is what we see in the New Testament as being called as shining a light. The shining a light is for the purpose of people seeing something different in us, is how they know that God actually is real and his love is real and his grace and forgiveness and his ability and power to to do things in, in our lives and through our lives is real. It speaks to him. It's a witness. All right, guys, thank you for listening. Uh, miss being able to hang out with you and see you at church. And, you know, I miss really being able to, you know, sing as well and worship. Um, but, yeah, I miss you guys. miss being able to have a handshake and a hug and a chat. And, uh, you know, but we will get back there. You know, this thing is not going to last forever. That hasn't stopped God's purposes in our church or in your own life. So, you know, focus on Him. Look after yourself. Look after your families. Be good to each other. And we'll talk soon. Peace. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning, uh, church. I'm the cameraman today as well. <laughs> so it's fantastic to see you. Yeah. And thank you, everybody. Thank you to the team and Mars uh, for sharing today and making Embassy at Yours uh, 
so informative and helpful and I hope everybody's enjoying it. Um, we've got a few things uh, just to update you on going into the week and uh, Mandy's going to start with that. Yep, firstly Mandy, just want to... Mandy, how tall you are today. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know, I must be eating well at home. <laughs> I am eating well at home, Probably. but I don't think it's making me taller. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to say, we want to say thank you to Benji. Uh, shout out to Benji yeah, Riley, well who, done, Benji. who got a bag of pods t this week um, because he was the first person to text in the notices from last week. Yeah. So that um, uh, competition's open again. If, yep. you, uh, if you would like your favorite sweet sent to you this week, then mm. uh, be the first person to good. email today's notices to register at embassy.org.au. Excellent. And thank you to all of the entries into the Colouring In competition. Yeah. Weren't they exceptional as I was looking <laughs> through were. them? They were amazing. I'm sure you enjoyed them as well. And uh, so we've got something special. We were going to have a winner but uh, because they were all so good, everyone's a winner. So uh, today around 12 o'clock, you're going to get something at your door, <laughs> something nice to eat for lunch. And I uh, just want to thank everybody for getting involved and uh, in that colouring in competition. Great work. Yeah. Link, the, uh, the link show for Rookies and Legends was on this morning. Fantastic. Yeah. And I just wanted to encourage the families that haven't maybe checked it out yet that it's, I feel, and those that watched it, um, feel that it's just a real blessing to, to families and to, to our primary age kids particularly. So check that out and uh, we will keep you informed on how to, how to jump on easily. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And uh, this coming week, uh, Friday, Disruptive, uh, going to be on uh, uh, Zoom again and they're having a great time together. Jared uh, spoke last week and that was fantastic. So well done. Uh, the leadership team at Disruptive. So I'm just thinking if you know anybody that is in your age group in that high school age group and maybe they uh, they want to connect with some others, why don't you invite them along this week? Mm. I'm sure you're doing that already, but uh, there's uh, some great things in store. And Unmute, yeah. uh, which is just our Zoom meeting on Thursday nights uh, while we're in lockdown. Uh, it was fantastic, Ming shared and uh, Ting as well. Uh, and we just had a lovely time of uh, chatting and discussing together, talking about building relationships, good healthy relationships. Uh, Haley's back this week and we're going to continue our consideration, our thinking. It's all just really about good mental health and just looking after ourselves in this lockdown period. So uh, if you haven't tried it yet, why don't you try it? There'll be a Zoom uh, uh, link on our socials. Join us uh, and uh, we're getting some regulars as well. So we're having a good time together. Yeah, cool. Tuesday nights, of course, is uh, Prayer Hub. And really it's a time for us as a church family to pray together for each other. Um, and so important at this time. So Tuesday nights, Prayer Hub. If you can't make it and you have some prayer requests, you can uh, text those. Um, and we will, when we send out the link, we'll send um, the number that you can text your prayer request to and we'll pray on your behalf. Yeah, yeah, that's good. We love to pray for each other. Just a, as well, just a, a reminder about giving. Uh, if you'd like to give to Embassy, you can go on to our website, embassy embassychurch.org.au, uh, or you can find it on the socials as well. And uh, we'd love to you just to, uh, to give, continue to give if you can. Uh, that just helps uh, the church function and run. Talking about giving, we have a number of other ways to give as well. Uh, at the moment, it's pretty tough, uh, right? And Canterbury Bankstown's in uh, one of those LGAs, it's in special lockdown, and a lot of the embassy uh, people, uh, church, uh, in those areas that are in uh, heavy lockdown at the moment. So we want to continue to support you and to give to you as a, as a community and provide for you. So you can, uh, if you want to, got something to give to the community or make available, you can do that through We Are Embassy. I noticed that Paul and uh, T's dog is still available, <laughs> uh, cute little sta American staffy. So if you're looking for a dog or any other things, there's all sorts of stuff there. But we're also giving to the community. So uh, we're doing bread on Sunday mornings and our hamper hub on Wednesday mornings. So uh, if you're in need, or if you know anybody in need in the area, uh, as long as you're, uh, we're doing it all COVID safe, if you'd like to uh, take advantage of that, please do to help others mm. in need at this time. Yeah, so good. Mm. Yeah, together, together we support each other, yeah. which is cool. Um, 
So we're at the end except for pray, praying for you this morning and uh, wherever you're at, we're, we're with you. We're with you in prayer this morning. Psalm 84, 6 says, As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. Now I understand that Baca is actually a word that's used now, which is not such a, um, <laughs> not such a good term. But um, from a biblical sense, <laughs> it's a place of dryness. It's, it's a place, Not yeah, as they it. pass through the Valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. Yes. And so as Christians, um, I thought it was interesting to reflect on this that, yeah, it is tough at the moment. Maybe it's not just COVID. Maybe there's lots of other things that you're finding really tough at the moment. Yeah. But as Christians, um, I love that aspect of being able to reframe it. They mm -hmm. make it a place of springs. Yeah. And so for the dryness, not trying to downplay it, but we make it a place of springs because we know that our God mm -hmm. is for us. Yeah. And we know that whatever's happening, God is working in and through yeah, us yeah. on it's our faithful. behalf. And so this morning, we just want to pray for you that whatever you're feeling, that you'll be able to sense a place of springs in it, that God is doing something in you and that God is going to come through for us yeah. all. So we trust in him. He's a good and a faithful God. Amen. Mm. So yeah. let's pray. Mm. Uh, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the message on holiness. Mm. And uh, Lord, we really want to treasure holiness. We know that you are holy and uh, Lord, that we are imperfect, but by your spirit, you enable us to be more like you. And we just ask that that work would continue as we grow in our faith and our understanding of you. Mm. Help us to uh, be more like Jesus in our lives. And Father, we just pray for all of those that are feeling perhaps in that, that dry space at the moment, going through challenges, whatever it might be, related to the pandemic yes. or not. We just ask for your your uh, fresh water, your living water, Lord. We pray that, that because of your faithfulness to us, Lord, that we would hope in you. We would trust in you at this time. We pray for every need. We pray as a community that we're there for each other, that we continue to help. We thank you for the kindness amongst our people at Embassy. But Lord, we just pray that uh, ultimately and overall that you are our Father. We just look to you. We, yes. We, we, uh, look to you for everything that we need spiritually, emotionally and physically mm. and Lord we just ask that you are there for us with us uh, this week as we go into another week of lockdown. Mm. So Lord help us help those that are in uh, authority over us to make the right decisions uh, help the church as a whole uh, mm. Lord just to flourish in this time we ask in Jesus name. Amen. 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 God bless you, everybody. Love you guys. Have a great week. Take care. Bye. Bye.